a little bit ago, I made a video talking about how to properly roam in Rainbow Six Siege. And I discussed how it was a very vital role for any defensive lineup. However, there is a role just as important as roaming, and that is the anchoring role. Now, on the surface, the anchoring role seems very easy. Isn't it just a defender that stays in the site? Well, yes, but there's a little bit more to it. Whether you're picking the wrong operators, or you're just simply overswinging things. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to properly anchor, and I guarantee by the end of this video, you'll learn something new, and you will anchor like a pro. To start, I'm going to ask you a very simple question. During the preparation phase as a defender, what are you doing exactly? Most of you likely said you're putting down reinforcements, and that is a good answer to be fair. But now you have to ask yourself, who is putting down the reinforcements? Who is getting the hatch? Are you making the head holes or feet holes? And who in the love of god is making the rotate? As for who's getting the hatch, that is usually an operator that doesn't have much utility to place down. So I'm thinking Solus. She only has a gadget that detects electronics with a click of a button, so she doesn't necessarily have to put down reinforcements and she can go get the hatch. But let's say you are playing Maestro for example, one of the best anchors in the entire game. Here's a pretty typical Maestro round for you, and I'm using the bar side on Cafe as an example. For those who don't know, Maestro comes with a bailiff shotgun handgun thing, and it's used to make holes in walls. It's not really used for killing people because it kind of sucks at that. He also comes with impact grenades. The bailiff can be used to make feed holes. And for rotate capability. Amazing for making head holes. And don't forget, you have your main gadget, which is your evil eyes. Now you're likely confused, and you may be saying to yourself, Critter, what are you getting at here? As an anchor, people expect you to set up the site properly. Now, for the Maestro clip, you're not necessarily doing all of that. You will have help with your other anchor. And I am saying one other anchor, because the anchor role can be split up into two. Hard anchors and soft anchors. The soft anchor is basically someone that stays really close to site. Here's an example. Organ is yet another popular map in Siege. And the basement site is also popular. And a deep hole tank for attackers who do. It's try to take blue. And this is what I mean by a soft anchor and being close to sight. I'm not necessarily in sight and I'm just extremely close. An operator you'll see typically played here is Smoke with his deployable shield. Smoke is good here because of his toxic canisters. By deploying his smoke canisters you release a toxic gas and it will last 10 seconds east and he holds 3 of them. So that's why he's typically played here. Sometimes you'll see slight deviations with maybe the Chanka or even a Goyo here, but the main one will be Smoke. The main role as this type of anchor is just to delay as much time as you can. Sometimes the attackers will be smart and they will clear out your shield and sometimes you are forced to go out. When that happens, just reinforce the wall if you're playing blue specifically and you should be good. If you waste at least a minute on the route, you did your job successfully and now it comes down to you being a hard anchor and your other anchors helping defend the site. What could likely happen in a round is all your roamers die off, and it does not matter if it's early on or not. What do you do then? Now unfortunately, it comes down to what is going on specifically in that round. We're going to take Basement as an example yet again. Let's say hypothetically they push Smoke out of blue, they are pushing Tower, Blue, and maybe even Freezer says, what exactly should an Anchor do? The easy answer to that is just frag out and kill everyone. And strangely enough, the Anchors have some of the best guns on defense. Take Smoke for example, he has one of the best shotguns in the game, which is pretty much a sniper, I'm not going to be honest, and he comes with the SMG-11. But hypothetically, let's say you're going against G2 in their prime. What does an anchor do exactly then? Well, sometimes you're just going to have to rely on your gadgets strictly. This is what I mean by you could be picking the wrong operators. Smoke is an excellent operator for the anchoring role, but then you might have some players that pick Rook. Rook is not a bad operator by any means, but think about what he realistically does in that type of scenario. It gives you 20 extra health points in a game with one-shot headshots, and you can still provide. The issue with that is that it takes one shot to kill a down person, so if you pull off a self-revive, the enemies are just kind of bad, I'm going to be honest. Let's take Enko for this example. He comes with a Yokai drones and deployable shield. For the Yokai drones, they can not only detect where the attackers are by being a simple camera, it can also move around like a regular drone, provided Echo is controlling it. And it can disorient attackers and stop the plant from going down. 
in terms of the fragment department, he comes with probably the best shotgun in the game right now, the Supernova Shotgun, which is a better sniper than Kali Sniper could ever be. He comes with an MP5 SD that does more damage than Rook's MP5, and it has a 1.5 scope with very low recoil. And the Baron 9 secondary SMG that has controllable recoil, good damage, and an insanely fast fire rate. Another good example for this is Maestro. He comes with the Alda 5.56, so in the fracking department, he is well covered because it has an insanely fast fire rate with good damage and an LMG on defense. I mean, guys, let's be honest here. And he comes with his amazing Evil Eye gadget, which is good as just a regular camera, but it can also potentially deny the plant and peck at the attackers with small damage. And personally, I think Jaeger can fulfill the role as an anchor easily. I know a lot of people like to roam as Jaeger, and people even consider him as an anchor in general, but he's a 2sp2 armor, and usually around the 2sp2 armor rating is when you can be considered a soft anchor in my opinion. And his 416 carbine isn't really that good anymore, but as an anchor, it's not that bad. Oh yeah, post-editing creator here, yeah, a zombie's a thing by the way, keep it bears, cat cans SMG, I, I mean, j j just watch my video on how to play her. But I think the most important thing that people don't realize is that despite you being an anchor, you can hop on cams a lot and help your roamers out immensely. And this also goes back to Echo. You can use his Yokai drones again as a regular drone. And granted, you will have to be on your cams a lot if you decide to do this, but the reward and payoff of it is so huge because again, you're not only delaying time while helping the roamers delay time, you're also potentially getting man advantage. Now inherently, being an anchor is pretty straightforward. But some people don't really utilize the stuff that you should be doing as a defender. It really comes down to what you do during the prep phase, and it can really make or break a round. Are you putting the right rotate? Are you placing down your gadgets properly? Are you reinforcing the right walls? Is the head hole supposed to go here? Stuff like this is what an anchor usually thinks about. Now granted, if you know the size setup, this doesn't really affect you, but especially as a newer player, this can be very overwhelming even as the easiest role in the game. Especially in the lower ranks, because they don't know the proper sight setups and they probably don't even know half the clouds on most of the maps. So for your newer players, all I have to say is just play the game. It comes down to time commitment and your general game knowledge. So you're probably still thinking to yourself, yeah, anchoring is pretty easy. And yeah, it is, if you know what you're doing. And that comes to any role. And I won't be surprised if you're watching this video and everything I just said you already know in what you do in the game. And to that, I have to say, well, then you didn't really need to watch the video, but I appreciate you anyway. However, if you're a newer player, I hope I helped you out, at least in some way, whether it's big or small. But with that, that is everything you realistically need to know about anchoring. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and say that's the end of the video. If you like what I make, I appreciate it if you subscribe. And I am Credit Tony. I hope you have a good day or good night. And goodbye.